Hello everybody. Let us get started now on helmets before we begin. I am trying a subliminal way here. Uh, maybe it's not so subtle after all. I think I overdid it. Yeah. But anyway, three is a magic number. No, it is. Anyhow, before we go into helmets one, I want to go back and just kind of refresh some stuff. You know, we talked about parasites and protozoa. Okay, maybe I, I kind of sped through that a little bit at the end, and I apologize. So for diarrhea, okay, the ones that can cause diarrhea, you have entamoeba histolytica. That's going to cause your amoebic dysentery, okay? And then you're going to have giardia lamblia. That's going to cause the foul-smelling, greasy, fatty diarrhea. And then cryptosporidium causes diarrhea and AIDS and the immunocompromised. Now, just talking about some of the transmissions from the parasites, the sand fly is going to do the uh, Leishmania. Remember, that's going to be the, the blackening disease with uh, Donovani. And then you're going to have the, that sex is going to transmit the trichomoniasis, or trichomonas, excuse me, vagin, vagin, uh, you see the word there, I apologize. Uh, the sessile fly is going to do trypanosoma, except for cruzi, because remember, that's the kissing bug. So the sessile fly is a painful bite. The kissing bug is not a painful bite. It's just a little peck. Like, mwah. Ingestion of cysts. You're going to get toxoplasma from there. Cryptosporidium, microsporidia, uh, giardia, and entamoeba histolytica. Also, I'd like to point out that for toxoplasma, um, raw meat, you can get it from raw meat as well as the cat feces. Okay, you remember, tell that pregnant woman, go sit on the sofa, right? All right. And so then you have the anopheles uh, mosquito for plasmodium. And so now we will begin with the first part of our helmets lecture. So, the way we're breaking up helmets, and we're doing the first part, which are the flat worms, then the second part of the helmets are going to be our round worms. Okay, so for the flat worms, you'll notice that I have patty helmets right here. It's really platy helmets, you know, P L A T Y, but I put patty helmets to help you remember like a hamburger patty or something that's flattened down, you know? And so we have flat worms, okay? So you have the cestodes and you have the trematodes. The cestodes are your tapeworms, trematodes are your flukes. Okay, so with the tapeworms, let's go for the tinea and the tapeworms. That makes sense, right? All right, and so the tinea solium right here is going to be uh, ingested from eggs from under undercooked pork and it is known as the port tapeworm. You're going to see a CT of brain calcifications for that one uh, called cyst, uh, kind of cystic lesions. All right, it can actually cause uh, cysti, cystocerosis. Excuse me, sorry. Some of these words are very hard to pronounce, of course. And it can cause intestinal infection with ocular issues like retinitis or uveitis. I need to write some of these words down so that way I make sure I pronounce them a little bit better. But um, you can also have subcutaneous nodules with this. And so you're going to treat it with uh, prosequantil and bendazoles. Remember, round worms bend. And uh, also flat worms can bend too. Okay? So in case y'all are using some of those first aid mnemonics. All right. So then you see the saginata form right there beside it. That's going to be uh, from undercooked beef. And that one also you can treat with prosequantil. All right? So let's go up here for Aconococcus. Granulosis. I had a question about it the other night, and basically there was a sheep hunter. Uh, who the heck hunts sheep? I didn't know that you could, but anyway, and he he has dogs, and he lets his dogs sleep with him at night. Okay, and then he he got up, and he had cysts in his liver, or you know, or something of that nature. I don't know. If I just woke up, and there were cysts in his liver. I can't remember exactly, but anyhow, Echinococcus granulosis. That's going to come from ingestion of eggs from dog feces. It will cause cysts in your liver, and it causes anaphylaxis if antigens are released. You can also get it from, I think, from sheep shearing, if I'm not mistaken, or hunting sheep, something to do with sheep. And um, the treatment has been dissolved. You're not going to find a whole lot on some of these things. You know, you're just not. And so then, this word right here, I'm not even going to pronounce it. The latum one, okay? That's ingestion of larvae from raw freshwater fish. You're going to get a vitamin B12 deficiency sometimes because the tapeworm will eat up all the B12 in the intestines. Okay, that's what I think about. And it leads to anemia and treat it with prosequantil. Okay, so I hope you're seeing prosequantil and bendazoles are kind of your go-tos here. Let's go over here to trematodes. So for trematodes, your flutes, okay, you have getting schisty with it right there, the schistosoma. People are going to come in and they're going to complain about the worst itch they've ever had, all right? It's uh, very fond of African water over there, all right? It's common cause of bladder cancer um, in the third world countries. Snails are host of this. And so basically it's going to penetrate your skin, go to the portal vein, into the liver, and cause bloody diarrhea. In the and it's going to affect the venous plexus of bladder and cause hematuria. So you have blood coming out the front end 
and the back end with this one, okay? And so the disease, is, it affects the liver and spleen, causes granulomas, fibrosis, and inflammation, uh, inflammation, excuse me, and um, the chronic infection can be actually be going to become squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder. So, you know, getting schisty with it isn't always good out there in those African waters, all right? Treat it with prosequanum. Paragonimus westermani, all right, for that one, you get it from undercooked crab meat. You get lung infections and bacterial infections with hemoptysis. And so the treatment for that one, prosequantum, all right? And so then the sinensis uh, form over here of this uh, helmet, anyway, undercooked fish, uh, it's going to affect your biliary tract, lead to inflammation, leads to pigmented gallstones. And its association with this is with cholangiocarcinoma. Yes, I said that right. Cholangiocarcinoma, okay? Treat it with prosequantal as well. So, let's go on to helmets too, the round worms. Notice here I have the circle here and I have the little round things going out here. All right, so let's look at this. So for blood and tissue, you're in the tissue world. So T world is the way that I came up with that mnemonic for us. All right, over here in the intestines, you're going to eat egg ingestion and then when we're talking about the larvae form did you know you ate it or you ingested it or scan for skin so not skin but scan okay so those are just some ways to get that kind of got those two from Howard Shin's micro mnemonics all right so let's talk about these a little bit now so let's start with the intestinal ones right over here okay and so if we come over here we'll see the uh, enterobius the vermicularis is the pinworm that's what's commonly called a pinworm you're eating food contaminated with eggs for that. It causes an intestinal infection. Um, anal pruritus right there. So you're going to diagnose it with the scotch tape test. So look that up if you're not familiar with that. It's pretty cool. Um, treat it with bendazoles or pyrantal pamoate is what you're going to treat with that one. Pyrantal pamoate. All right. And so anyway, so then you ascaris lumbricoides. All right. Fecal oral ingestion. The eggs are visible in feces under a microscope. Intestinal infection. Treat it the same way. All right, strongyloides now. Uh, whoops, I skipped one, didn't I? Let's, this one right here, not really. I'm not going to talk about that. You can you can look that one up if you want a little information on that. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be smart about it or anything, but I'm just not going to really spend a lot of time on that one. Let's go to strongyloides over here. So that's going to come from larvae and soil. It can penetrate the skin. Um, goes through your feet most times. Intestinal infection causing vomit, watery diarrhea, anemia, and ivermectin is what you're going to treat with that, or albendazole. And so now the K for hookworms to help you remember and scan that mnemonic that the K is for hookworms. So those two under there are going to be your two hookworm forms, okay? Necator americanus, and then you have the duodenal form over there. And so the larvae will penetrate the skin, have intestinal infection, of course, causing anemia by sucking blood from the intestinal walls. Bendazoles, pyrantal, pamoate, treat those as well. All right, and so let's just talk about the trichinella spiralis. It's not really that tested from what I understand, but I like it, so I want to talk about it. Basically, you get that from ingesting raw or undercooked pork. Your striated muscle biopsy will show encysted larvae, and so you're going to have hypereosinophilia as well with that. And so trichinosis is the disease it causes, and you get early diarrhea followed by fever and severe myalgia. Like I said, hypereosinophilia, and you might get a maculopapular rash as well. Let's go over here to the tissue world now, okay? Let's start from the bottom. Start it from the bottom. Go to the top. So, okay. This one right here, the Dracula, okay? You get that because you drank. You drank unclean water, okay? So, this Dracula one right here, you drank, or you drank unclean, unclean water. So, think of it that way, okay? And so, skin inflammation, ulceration, slow worm extraction is what you're going to do to get rid of that. Loa, loa. Woo. Now, if I'm not mistaken, loa means spirit in Africa, so this could mean like spirit, spirit. I'll have to talk to some of my friends to see. But um, basically, you will see the little worm swarming around in your eye with this one, okay? And so it's transmitted by like flies, mango flies, horse flies, deer flies. All right, you get the skin swelling and worm in your conjunctiva. All right, now let's go on up to this one right here. For the volvulus, I'm just going to say that, okay? This one is the volvulus. You get that from the female black fly bite, and it's the female black fly. Black fly, she bites you. You get hyperpigmented skin and river blindness, all right? And so you treat it with ivermectin. Think of iver and think of river, all right? So you have the I-V-E-R spelled both ways, both in both of those words. You get black skin nodules with that one. 
And then let's go to Wucheria Bancrofty. This is a scary one, man. That one's always scared me, okay? This is Elephantiasis right there, Wucheria Bancrofty. All right, so the female mosquito bites you. It blocks your lymphatic vessels, get all that swelling. And so you get fibrosis of worms around your lymph nodes causing edema. And that becomes, you know, then Elephantiasis takes nine months to a year after the bite to become symptomatic even. And then finally, right up there, the Toxicara canis. Um, visceral larva migraines is what you, that's the buzzword for that if you want to remember a buzzword. And so you're just going to get that from food contaminated with eggs, okay? Now something I decided to do since we have a little bit of time left is to go on over here to fungi and kind of show you how I broke this up, okay? And so for mycology here for fungi, we have superficial, cutaneous, and then sub -Q, right? Then we're going to go systemic and opportunistic. Okay, so just very quickly, explanations of these. So you'll notice I have stars around subcutaneous and systemic, and the reason is because those are going to be your dimorphic fungi. Now your dimorphic fungi are going to be the ones that they are in yeast form or in mold form, okay? They're mold in the cold and yeast in the beast, okay? So when, you, when they are actually inside of you, they will turn into a yeast. When they're outside of you, then they are in their mold form, okay? So when we talk about fungi, we'll kind of break it up to on which ones are geographic for these systemics. For instance, coccidioides is in California, the C, all right? And coccidioides is in California. Paracoccidioides, all right, is going to be in South America. So think of somebody to make that association as well. Histoplasma capsulatum is going to be Hiss on the Mist on the Mississippi River Valleys, Ohio River Valley areas, and then Blastomycosis, okay, you blasting it over here in the east side, okay, so, you know, we have West Side and West Nile and all that, you know, let's get something over here on the east, so Blastomycosis over here on the east, and so Sporothrix Shinkii, what that is, that's the Rose Gardener's disease, that's why I put a rose right there, all these are your dimorphic fungi, so they're going to be, you know, uh, yeast in the beast, mold in the cold, Candida albicans can also do that. Remember, that's the one you're going to get when your CD4 uh, drops below 500 in AIDS patients. Now, this little booger right here, that's just, all that is, is it's supposed to be like a little icon for you to remember it's dimorphic. Because, look, I tried to draw it to, it's like, look, is this a bird? You know, like, here's its beak right here, and there's its eye or whatever. Or is it a rabbit? You know, here's its eye, and there's its little nose, you know, and there's its ear. So, I tried to draw like a, a dichotomous picture to help you remember to die morphic icon okay for these that are dimorphic um these microsporums and epiderma phytons and trichophyton those are all going to be your tineas like where you get your tinea corporis tinea capitis and all of that type of thing all right so i am going to go ahead and end this series so that we can really dive into these fungi on the next one and that will complete absolutely every bit of your medical micro from me thank you one more thing three dollars if you have not donated to three dollars joeyjohnsondo.com you know um there we go right there three dollars i certainly appreciate it bye-bye